I've had like beautiful, amazing, incredible experiences, enlightened moments and realizations about myself and my life, moments of bliss and pleasure and presence. But like I have had this shadow side as well, but the shadow side comes in hard and strong it comes in hard and strong and it hits you straight away and you just have to face it and you have to like detangle it put it back into alignment again you can't just push it away because it just comes back a big thing about the dark side is it will show you all your it will show you all your shadows it will show you the things that you need to heal it will bring that to the surface to be seen to be healed and that's difficult that's uncomfortable it is the shadow of kundalini it's like the yin and the yang you've got the light and the dark welcome to another episode of the kundalini series i thought i'd wear black today in the theme of today's video the dark side of kundalini i thought this was a subject to touch on i mean it's important because i just don't think that some people understand the extent of like the other side of it people just think oh it's an amazing awakening but it's like sis please just understand that there is stuff that happens my kundalini experience my kundalini awakening was completely spontaneous and was completely unexpected so you know i know firsthand what it's like to like not choose this <laughs> it just happened if you're new here welcome if you are returning welcome back it's wonderful to have you here if you are interested in anything related to kundalini i have got a whole playlist on my youtube channel all to do with kundalini so please go check that out if that interests you it is an open-ended creation that i'm going to be continuously doing for as long as i feel like it on this channel my channel isn't just based on kundalini i do talk about other spiritual subjects as well but i'm not fitting into a niche i just create what i feel like creating i do have a podcast as well i have filmed loads of content in regards to kundalini and if you want to watch my episode where i talk about my full kundalini awakening well awakening experience then please go check that out it is quite long like most of these videos but there's just so much to cover and so much to you know touch base on that i think it's important that i get all the things in there you know <laughs> i can't just make things quick and easy because i just talk a lot so strap in get comfy grab yourself a nice drink and yeah the dark side of kundalini so i have definitely experienced heavier aspects of this kundalini journey at the end of this video i'm going to talk about other things that other people can experience but i've not experienced myself so we'll touch on that we'll talk about some mental things and some physical things that i found i've experienced within my journey in the last year and a half of having this kundalini awakening started a year and a half ago in january of 2023 and it is now august 2024 so these things could evolve and change they could lessen they could worsen who knows to start off with i wrote down backache but also just physical pain now i've noticed that ever since i've had my kundalini awakening and specifically like when it first happened i definitely struggled with really bad backache specifically in my lower back and i had to do some physical movement and not exercises per se but it was more so just like dancing and like moving my hips and it actually stopped the pain but I have definitely been suffering with bad back the whole time. It comes and goes and gets worse sometimes and sometimes it's fine. My back pain gets a lot worse when I am due on my period, but I noticed that when I had my Kundalini awakening, I had the most severe backache in my lower back. I was really struggling to just do life. But as I said, I shifted it out by doing movement. So I think movement is really important to try and incorporate into your daily life. If it's just stretching, if it's dancing, if it's the gym, but as long as you're keeping your back loose and not letting it tighten up physical pain is a common symptom that you get and i say this is more dark side because it's not a comfortable thing to like have physical pain and i don't think people necessarily realize that but i see it as the energy has basically exploded out of you and there is certain blockages that we have within our body and the pain that we get in certain areas in our body after a kundalini awakening i personally believe is trapped energy is dense energy that needs to be shifted and moved out so you could do things like somatic movement you could stretch you could go to the doctor it's probably the best thing to do but it sometimes can be stored in an area within a certain chakra if there's like a bit of pain within that chakra then there is maybe some work to look at within that chakra so like study that specific chakra and see the negative aspects of it is and maybe work on like trying to better that and grow in that area but physical pain is a big thing and i know the people that have really suffered with that and people have talked about that online another thing is chronic fatigue now I have found that I just felt tired all the time I just felt like I was never fully awake I slept so much I don't know whether that is combined with the physical pain that I was going through but I just felt so tired I do believe in a lot of ways that the chronic fatigue 
just comes with this big shift that's happened within your body because if you think about it you have had this huge enlightenment and this huge awakening that's like energetically shifted through your body and out of you and you know there's a lot that happens in that space and it kind of like shakes you up and it's like your nervous system and your body needs to like recalibrate back into alignment so I almost find that the chronic fatigue comes alongside just like you shedding your old skin because if you think about it kundalini is all to do with the snake and I've said this a few times the kundalini is the symbol of the snake and what do snakes what do snakes do do snakes what do snakes do they shed their skin so it's like you're being reborn again you shed your old skin and you are reborn and that happens over and over and over again when you're moving through kundalini awakenings I think at a rapid pace when that's happening you're shedding your old and you're like living in your new so it's a lot of change mentally and physically so that will I think naturally just tire you out this might not be what other people experience but I definitely experience chronic fatigue I'm not feeling it so much now I definitely feel a lot more awake than I did in the first few months of that happening to me but I just felt so tired all the time another dark side of it is altered vision I called it altered vision but I haven't experienced it to the level of extreme that some people have people I know personally that have had a kundalini awakening have had incredible incredibly scary and intense altered vision and in what I mean by that is kind of like you're hallucinating but you're not on any kind of substance or anything you're just hallucinating in real time for me I've talked about this in other videos as well if you watch my full kundalini awakening experience the only time I've really experienced altered vision was when I was living in Glastonbury I was walking down from tour it felt like my feet were on the wrong legs my feet were on the wrong foot if that makes sense so it was like my legs were sweet switched over but I was walking straight it was just very very trippy and I had to like really focus on like reminding myself that that's not the case that's just in my mind I know people that have had really quite horrific and borderline traumatic altered visions of like their experience but in reality that's not actually happening but in their mind and what they're seeing that is what's happening and it can get really really dark and really really scary and really really weird there's definitely some things that I have felt and seen in my mind's eye not so much with my open eye but like with my eyes shut and then seen in my mind's eye I've had somewhat of an altered vision on the person maybe but then part of me is like is it because there is actually this side to them but I did find that I had one evening where I felt like I started getting really really anxious and overthinking and worrying about this one specific person that I made friends with actually when I was living in Glastonbury but I was seeing all this stuff of like them manipulating me and taking advantage of me and I'd welcome them into my flat and stuff and I was just like really worried about it afterwards because what I saw in my mind's eye was like not good I was really trying and having to tell myself it's just the kundalini it's probably showing me my fears but this is not the reality of what's happened and it's not the reality of the now and it can get very confusing and I feel like people can get I think it's borderline spiritual psychosis to be honest there is a difference between spiritual psychosis and kundalini but I do find that some people can go to the extreme of actually believing some of these things things you just have to be really really careful and have to be really really strong in the mind to understand that what is in your reality is in your reality try and be clear on the real reality that you're in now rather than like these things that are in the mind because kundalini does bring up your fears it does bring up your worries and things that scare you or will scare you or things that you're worried about potentially happening it does bring that to the surface so you can end up finding that you're like living in your fears or living in the anxiety of the fear of the worry of the potential of what could go wrong then it takes you out of the present moment and it takes you out of the joy of life and you just end up living in constant fear in fight or flight so you've just got to be like really discerning of like what is true and what's not I found that what really helped me with those experiences when I've been in those situations where I've been living in fear rather than living in like the groundedness of this reality and in the joy I found that what helped me is when I've been like noticing I'm thinking about what could go wrong and the potential fears of what's happening I have to remind myself and sometimes it is just that you have to remind yourself first it's remembering that but it's like reminding yourself go into your body feel in your heart how are you feeling right now are you feeling safe are you feeling scared is the current situation that you're in potentially threatening tap into that space and just feel how you're currently like feeling in your body and within the surrounding that you're in right now coming out of the mind because a lot of it is all mind chatter when I've done that I've actually realized that I'm actually safe and I actually am okay and that I feel 
okay in this environment and I feel okay with these people and sometimes it's quite hard to differentiate especially when you're really in the thick of it but just really coming back into the body coming back to your breath breathing and trying to come back to the present because sometimes the mind will take you places that are just actually made up so coming back to your body is like really important and back to the present and back to the breath so the next thing is change in sleep this hasn't been so bad for me I definitely found that when I was living in Glastonbury before I had the Kundalini awakening I was actually quite good with like getting up in the mornings and you know having like this whole routine and obviously I think it was coming alongside like the chronic fatigue I think the chronic fatigue made this a problem at the start and then maybe I'm just in a bad habit now but I find that my sleep pattern is different I go to sleep later and wake up later whereas like before I had the Kundalini awakening I was going to bed early and waking up early and I do want to get back into that cycle again it just takes time sometimes I'm going to come back to the change of sleep pattern or change of sleep habit again at the end of this video so the next one is dark spirits at night okay so this one is um this one is this is something i've experienced um i feel like i've experienced this twice since i've had my kundalini awakening now i have heard people talk about this that they've dealt with this experience after having a kundalini awakening i think because your energy is so like out there you have opened yourself up to a whole nother level of energy that you're more sensitive to your surroundings and more sensitive to things that you might not necessarily know or understand so my experience with these two spirits have been very uncomfortable the second time it happened to me i actually found that i was really struggling to go to sleep at night without a light on without the tv on at least some form of light so that the room didn't feel so dark because i was really it just freaked me out the first time around i was awake and it it basically the only way i can explain it, it feels like some sort of fucking demon is in my room or there's some sort of demon that's trying to fuck with me the first time i was actually awake the whole time the second time i was asleep and i started dreaming about something i'll tell you about the dream one it started off where i was laying in bed and i could hear someone laughing outside they were laughing about something but the laugh just never stopped and the laugh just continuously got more and more evil more and more louder and then suddenly i could feel something crawling on me this thing was sniffing me like kind of sexually but it was very uncomfortable and i felt like i'd fallen into sleep paralysis and if you don't know what sleep paralysis is it's basically where you literally cannot move it's like you're awake but you physically can't move and that's what it felt like but basically it freaked me out so much i, I managed to end up pushing it off me and then i woke up and then i was like oh my god and i tried to like just turn over to my side and go back to sleep but i dropped into the same dream again and the same thing happened again what broke me out of it was with all my force i managed to because i my body froze again in this position and i could feel something crawling up my bed on top of me and i just pushed whatever energy it was off of me I like literally shouted no jumped out my bed ran to my light switched my light on and i was looking in my room and i was like oh my god oh my god oh my god i, I don't know how i feel about sharing this on here but it's not something I've talked about much, to be honest, to many people. It's just horrible, man. It's just horrible. It really freaked me out. The second time it happened, it was kind of similar, but I was awake the whole time. It just felt like something was crawling on the bed and something was talking in my head, trying to fuck with me and tell me what they were trying to do to cause trouble, basically. This is something that I heard about, but it never happened to me until, I'm going to say in the last like five months, it's happened twice. And the second time was not actually that long ago. I'd say it was only about two months ago. So it's made me very conscious about certain energies and certain things that you don't realize that you can allow in. I think when you believe a lot in spirits and things like that, you can welcome in a lot of good spirit, but you can also welcome in bad spirits. So it's important to be very, very careful about what you're welcoming in, what you're letting in and how well you're protecting yourself so bad spirits is definitely something that i've heard can happen to people and it's definitely happened to me i'm gonna i'm gonna say it because it it felt very very real it's not the only time i've had interaction with spirit before but my previous interactions in the past with spirits have been very intense and 
have always scared me. It's something you have to like grow to try not to get scared of over time. I've had lots of experiences actually that I've never spoken about on my channel at all, but maybe it is something if people are interested in me in talking about it, then I'm more than happy to, but I just know that there's a lot of people that don't believe it and probably think that I'm fucking crazy, but it has been my experience. So the next thing is questioning belief. So I've talked about this in some of my previous videos that I've talked on Kundalini Awakenings. Questioning beliefs is still one of those things that is present for me. I'm still trying to figure out. I think I'm just learning that I don't want to just be one way fits all. Like I'm a spiritual gal and this is what I believe in. I'm coming from a place of being very open now and wanting to learn about different religions and learning about other people's experiences and life not having to be just solely about spirituality and not fitting into this box. Just being very open and curious about everything but not making it my whole identity and my whole life. I've seen a lot of bullshit in the spiritual community and I know I've said this quite a lot and I am sorry to the people that don't have that bullshit and are very real and honest and true to them and true to the people around them but it's just something I've seen a lot since I've had this awakening. I think because I've seen people within the community not show up in integrity to what they're preaching. You just look at things and you're like I don't know who to trust, I don't know who to believe. These people are preaching all of this stuff yet look at how they are actually showing up behind closed doors and it's one of those things that you can observe and it just makes you a bit more cautious about certain communities and people and at the end of the day I personally believe that like there's bullshit in like every community it, it's not just one space like you don't just get bullshit in school and bullshit at work like there's bullshit in every type of community personally I think there's always the light and dark in it as well so questioning beliefs has been a big one that I'm still trying to figure out to be honest I just don't want my whole channel to be about spirituality and I feel like I've kind of made it that way and so I'm just in the process of like trying to you know just share what interests me and what lights me up and what I enjoy and it not just be about that you know the next thing is lack of concentration lack of concentration has definitely been a big thing for me but I think in general in life I lack that within certain tasks and things that I am trying to do I do find that when I'm doing something that doesn't light me up like my nine to five job my matrix job it doesn't light me up I don't love it it's not something that I want to do for the rest of my life I find it so hard to focus and concentrate and I think that I used to be like that in classroom anyway but ever since this kundalini experience I have gotten worse and I don't know whether it's because I'm even more aware of how much I, I don't enjoy it sometimes I just sit there and I think oh my god I could be spending my time doing so many other things that are so much more enjoyable for me and I know I'll be focused and concentrating on these things the lack of concentration just seems to be mostly like around tasks that I don't find as enjoyable it's not a big one it's not a big deal that one but it's kind of annoying thinking the worst is also another dark side of it I've noticed that where I've mentioned about how your fears are like revealed to you within this experience, all your fears come to the surface and all your worries, but they're coming to the surface for them to be healed, for them to be seen, for you to heal them, for you to like actually acknowledge them and want to work to not feel that and experience that anymore. I personally do believe that is the reason why they come up so intensely. And I think when you've had the awakening, you can't help but face it and I like actually work through it. And I almost find that every time I do that, it's like a two week period, making sure I'm acknowledging it and loving it and giving myself grace in the process and then learning to heal it then I can kind of reprogram it and rewire my neural pathways around it and like learn that the experience that I'm having with these people and or this person is actually safe and it's actually okay and it's not the same as what it was so thinking the worst has been one of the things that has come up for me a lot as and when it's almost yeah it's almost like I have to learn that like you have to come back to the present it's like a reminder to be like you're not present you're actually really like over worrying, you're overthinking, you're allowing your anxiety to get the better of you. I am a person at the end of the day, I do get anxious about things, I do worry about things, I do get stressed sometimes. And when I'm in situations that are new and different, and you know, I'm, I'm experiencing them for the first time in like years, then yes, I am going to worry that the old stuff is going to happen again. But the Kundalini awakening has made that even more present for me. It's brought it up for me, like I said, at rapid pace. So like, I just believe it's the Kundalini trying to be like, 
you need to fucking face this fear because you need to let it go. You can't keep holding on to these types of things because you're just always going to be miserable within this experience that you're having that's causing you to have this worry. Although it's technically quite a positive thing in the long run, it is the dark side because it is the shadow side of Kundalini. It's the shadow of the enlightenment that you kind of have to have both. It is just the light in the dark and it comes with everything, doesn't it? So the next thing is sensitive to others' energy. I've mentioned this because sometimes your sensitivity levels after an awakening is so much more intense. I was already quite sensitive before anyway, but this has just made it even more intense. But like when people are not in a, the best place or the environment that you're in isn't great, it can actually make it a lot more uncomfortable for you to cope with. So this is a bit of a shadow aspect because you kind of have to learn to really, really ground yourself and really breathe and really like protect your energy within that kind of experience learning to like separate your energy from someone else's can be hard because it's not yours to carry at the end of the day it's not your shit to carry it's not your problem to carry and sometimes it's hard you know when we love someone and we care about them it's really hard to not feel what they're feeling but that is a big thing about having this awakening is that you feel people like on a really deep level you feel that person's experience you feel it can sometimes feel it physically in your body even when they're having physical pain so it's one of those things where you're just like your sensitivity levels are just so much more intense that you just have to really get hold of like how you manage it so it can be challenging I found that challenging at times and I've found myself nearly having panic attacks at festivals because I'm seeing so much and I'm feeling so much and it's not comfortable and I'm really having to take myself away and you know breathe and really like nurture myself and love myself and just like remind myself that I'm safe the ability to see the truth in people I think I've mentioned this already a little bit anyway but recognizing that once you have this kundalini awakening the veil the fog the rose tinted glasses of life is lifted and you just see the truth you see the truth in people you see beyond the veil of what the person's actually showing up as and sometimes it's so uncomfortable to see the truth in people that you love when they are not showing up in integrity just showing not so good traits and just seeing a lot of people struggle actually being real and being them and just showing up as them and there's a lot of people trying to fit into boxes neglecting themselves because of that so like a lot of people are, are like afraid to show up authentically afraid to show up as their true self and a lot of people are living in an illusion it's hard to see especially when it's people that you love and it's also really hard to see in like large groups of people as well and again this goes back to like my experience at the festival you could just see the need to be seen by others you could see the need to be accepted by others but by doing that they've neglected their true self and they're just trying to squeeze into this little box and it's just difficult to see I think that's been a really hard one for me and it's caused me to isolate myself and it also helps you see where you're not showing up in truth to people as well it helps you see where you're not showing up in integrity to who you truly are and where you're falling short there as well like you really can see the bullshit in every aspect of your life I actually experienced this and I remember I had this like kind of an uncomfortable situation with someone that I know and we tried to discuss it at an event and I did not feel completely comfortable with what she was saying she was saying all the right stuff but it just didn't feel authentic and then I noticed within myself the problem that I did was I kind of just acted like I was okay and I was like yeah no it's fine and that I I wasn't bothered about it anymore because we spoke about it but I walked away and I felt like I was like that didn't feel real that didn't feel authentic but then I looked at myself and I was like yeah but I'm not being true and I was trying to sugarcoat things because I didn't want to hurt her feelings so I was trying to sugarcoat what I was saying I was trying to make it sound a little bit nicer but I just needed to be direct and honest and like just say it how it is and because I wasn't doing that there was just this uncertainty in her part when we actually did speak about it I mentioned this to her and said like I should have been like just direct with you and I will be doing that going forward and I won't you know sugarcoat things anymore I'll just be honest with you like straight up and I said to her I don't feel like you spoke all those words to me from a heart centered place it didn't feel authentic and she said yeah to be honest it didn't feel like it was authentic coming from me because I was just like anxious and didn't know what to say and I just thought this is the right thing to say but it just didn't feel like it was coming from my heart so what I was feeling was right those kind of things it can get a little bit uncomfortable to see that truth within others and within yourself I actually remember leaving that event and thinking I feel so annoyed with myself that I can't just be like this is how you made me feel by saying all that 
stuff which just really hurt my feelings this is how I actually feel about it I'm upset I'm actually upset about it because what you said hurt my feelings I couldn't say it because I was like I didn't want to hurt her feelings so in that experience I was neglecting myself you learn a lot about yourself going forward you need to come from a place that's more honest and true I think I've talked about fears anyway but like yeah all your fears will come up (laughs) and the fear of being taken advantage of was a big one because that's happened to me a lot in the past I have been let down and taken advantage of by a lot of people because I have been such a people pleaser I give a lot and I think where I give a lot it can just be taken and you don't really get the same back so I think that that has always been like a big fear of mine fear of being manipulated fear of you know being taken advantage of fear of being gaslit like all these things that I've experienced in the past like all these fears were coming up it just caused me to really isolate myself because I just thought I don't know who I can trust anymore and I was just seeing like a select few people and obviously I was living with family at this point and it was just such a confusing place I have had in the time of like going through the kundalini awakening i've had like beautiful amazing incredible experiences and enlightened moments and realizations about myself and my life and moments of bliss and pleasure and you know presence but like i have had this shadow side as well but the shadow side comes in hard and fucking strong it comes in hard and strong and it hits you straight away and you just have to face it and you have to like detangle it and put it back into alignment again so that you feel better because it's just like it doesn't shift you can't just push it away because it just comes back at full force so it's just one of those things that you just have to think okay I'm just gonna shut my curtains and turn the light on because I'm realizing it's got dark and my curtains are wide open and people are staring at me from the street it's probably not the best view now because of the lighting and stuff but it's gotten dark I've spent the whole day filming today anyway a big dark side of the kundalini experience for me I've just allowed so many people to like take advantage of me I've just seen a lot of negativity but like hidden negativity and hidden truths I've just seen that a lot and experienced that a lot within this last year and a half it's made me make my circle smaller for me at the end of the day it's quality over quantity I know quite a few people just based on like being here there and everywhere and traveling and things like that but I know deep down who my real ones are and who really really love and care and who I would do anything for and likewise would do back I think that a big thing about the dark side is like it will show you all your shit it will show you all your shadows it will show you the things that you need to heal it will bring that to the surface to be seen to be healed and that's difficult that's uncomfortable it is the shadow of kundalini it's like the yin and the yang you've got the light and the dark one thing i will say is when you're in the dark side of it just don't get stuck there just let yourself move through the motions let yourself feel the stuff let yourself kind of like have the realizations and then give yourself a spiritual pause a spiritual break give yourself some time to rest and relax and enjoy life give yourself grace go easy on yourself because it can be hard it can be difficult i think this is something that some people don't realize that when you have a kundalini awakening it can be fucking difficult i was quite lucky to be honest because i think that my experience hasn't been as hard as quite a few other people have experienced I actually know people personally that have had a really really hard kundalini awakening at the beginning for myself I think where I'd done a lot of work on myself previous to that I'd had a lot of time on my own I was single for like five years so I spent a lot of time in that five years really learning about myself and really understanding me as a person and what I want and need and what I want for my future and these kind of things and like what I can heal from the past I've come to a place where I'm like quite content with that and you know loving my myself but then like for me a big part of my experience within the dark side of the kundalini awakening has been all relational mostly it's all to do with like my sister wound I didn't realize how strong my sister wound was and that I was really having to learn to heal through that and healing the feminine side of my life because I feel like the kundalini awakening helped me heal the father wound and help me heal the masculine side of my life that's what I spent most of my time trying to heal and I think that this next phase the darker side was like trying to heal the relational side of things with the feminine and also 
learning to heal through relationship because that's also been something that I haven't experienced in a while. So I got to experience that firsthand physically and actually move through that. My partner's been so supportive and so amazing and so understanding of really intense experiences that I've had to move through. And like, he doesn't understand Kundalini himself. Like he's not really into that kind of thing. And I understand because if you haven't been through a Kundalini awakening, it's quite hard to understand what it is and what it means and what you feel and what you move through. But he's been so understanding and so like accepting of it because even though he probably thinks like what the fuck are you talking about he's just he just listens and he just hears me out and he lets me like share my experiences and he's open-minded about it so i'll talk about other people's experiences what you can move through with the dark side of kundalini people can go through spiritual psychosis that is a big thing that i see online i see hear people talk about i have someone that i know that actually really struggled again as i said through their experience of healing and we talked about it and um we shared that like some people that haven't moved through any deeper healings before they have a random kundalini awakening it just means that all that shit is going to come up it's all going to come up smack you in the face it's going to be like bam here you go here's your shit you need to heal it you need to move through it because this is something that you've been chosen to shift that out of you and like i said i was quite lucky that i had done so much healing before already but when people just have a random one and they are in the midst of like drug addiction or alcoholism or they're just not on the spiritual path at all it can be such a shock to the system it can make people feel absolutely crazy because you will visually see things that don't make sense you might think in ways that isn't like you and can be very 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 dark it can be very dark what my friend experienced is intense you know my heart goes out to her because even her telling me her experience i was just like oh my gosh wow for pushing through that you know other people can experience insomnia i'm very lucky that i haven't experienced that i am very grateful because I don't know what I would do without my sleep. I experienced the opposite of that, which was chronic fatigue. But if someone had insomnia, then they would probably experience chronic fatigue as well anyway, because you're going to be forever tired. But I still had chronic fatigue with incredible amount of sleep, whereas some people just can't sleep at all after this. And I know that's a big thing. And it's a thing within the Kundalini community that they talk about like people not experiencing any sort of sleep and it changing their whole sleep pattern, causing them to not sleep at all. And I just couldn't even imagine that. But that is a big thing that comes with the dark side of the Kundalini. Feeling alone is a big one. I can't say that I have massively felt alone. I would say that I've had moments of that, but mostly just down to the fact that like, this is an experience that I can't talk with many people about. I share it online because I know that there's people out there that really need to understand what's going on in their lives. Like I did when I had my Kundalini awakening, I went onto YouTube straight away and I was searching up different people's experiences to understand what was happening to me. So I know that by me sharing this is hopefully helping people just understand themselves a bit better as it did for me. So I just want to be that support for someone else that you're not alone. You're not alone. There's a massive group of people and community online on YouTube that are talking about this. And if this makes you feel seen, then I'm very, very happy because I know what it's like to feel alone. You know, there's a phase that I had when it first happened with me and I was like, oh my God, no one's going to get me. None of my friends are going to understand me not thinking about like my spiritual friends but even some of my spiritual friends I've talked to about this and they're like okay and I was a little bit like that when I spoke to my friend about her experience before it happened to me because I didn't understand what she was talking about then when it happened I was like oh I fully get what she's talking about now and it's weird it's like you don't understand until you experience it because it's such an out there you know random crazy thing the next thing is feeling like you're going crazy i mean it makes sense and it's understandable feeling like you're going crazy if you are like not on the spiritual path and then this just happens to you and you're experiencing all these realizations these need for life-changing habits and wanting to like do things differently and recognizing those are things about your past and recognizing those are things about how you are now and just being able to see more and that is a lot to take on a kundalini awakening is a lot anyway it's a big deal it's a it's not something to take lightly so that in itself can be very very overwhelming for someone that hasn't experienced anything like that it is really really like you know as i said out there so you can feel like you're going crazy especially if you're experiencing like some form of what feels like psychosis you're like imagining things 
or seeing things, thinking the worst, thinking that everyone's out to get you and things like that. Because that is a big one, thinking people are out to get you. I mean, I think just myself thinking the worst about things and had all these fears of being manipulated, controlled and all this kind of stuff. There's things like this that make you think, okay, at times you just think, oh my God, like, why am I thinking like this? Am I going crazy? And it could be so much worse for some people. If you feel like you're going crazy, <laughs> just, just go easy on yourself man go easy on yourself talk to people that have experienced it before and if it's only people online that you can talk to then then there's a comment section below for you to have discussions about it don't feel like this is a place where you can't talk or can't share your experiences this is a place for you to share and it's a safe space for you to share that is one thing i really want to make certain here people can feel really misunderstood i definitely experienced this at times but it very soon passed but there has been a few times where i felt incredibly misunderstood again because you're sharing something that's quite personal and quite different and people don't get it so like you can feel really misunderstood and people then might think you sound a little bit crazy and you're like yeah well I know I do but I'm not crazy and it's just an experience that I'm having and I just want to share it with you it's that fear of like what people might think of you the fear of being misunderstood and stuff like that so the whole thing can feel like your life has been flipped upside down flipped 360 it's like you know done a backflip it can be really intense some people change their whole lives around after they have a kundalini awakening some people just suddenly quit their job some people just fuck off and go traveling some people decide to break out of a relationship some people decide that they don't want to be friends with the people that they're friends with some people decide they don't want to be around their family big massive changes can happen for some people that have experienced this kundalini awakening and and i maybe people might not see that as a dark thing but like for me, I'm like, that is kind of like a shadowy aspect of the Kundalini because it's showing you all these things that are in your life already and you're recognizing there's certain aspects that maybe you want to change or you want to shift out of. So it can feel really like overwhelming because you're making like huge, some people make huge shifts and huge changes that are life altering changes. So yeah, I would say that is all the things that I can kind of think about in regards to the dark side of the Kundalini. All I will say is just you're not alone please leave any comments down in the comment section below if you found that there was anything that you experienced that was more on the darker side the shadowy side of the kundalini and we can get discussion going if there's any videos that you would like me to discuss in regards to the kundalini awakening that i haven't already please leave the ideas in the comments below i'd love to do that for you and if you've made it this far in the video just leave a little snake emoji i've got a whole selection of videos in regards to kundalini awakening i have a whole playlist on my channel so don't forget to check that out i'll link it down in the description below just go and binge some videos on my channel i do loads of different subjects i like to do some lifestyle content and vlogs and stuff it just shows you the side of me that's just like your everyday gal you know so if i post weekly so don't forget to like share subscribe hit the bell button down below to get notified subscribe if you vibe i'm sending you so much love and thank you so much for watching this video Mwah. bye guys that is the end of that today we are done